I've been like very cryptic about the meaning, which the I have to get something off my chest right away. This is um, I've been mystery shopping you. <laughs> That, my friends, is Courtney. Now, you might remember Courtney from part one of our Marketing Makeover Special Edition of the Loyalty Loop, where we mystery shopped two brands, Vidyard and a Primo. This week, we're gonna let Courtney and Annette in on our mystery shopping experience. I'll also show you the one place we decided we could make over to have the biggest impact fast on the prospect experience, and I'll also tell you why. You'll also get to see the first iterations of Annette and Courtney's transformations, and we're going to take a field trip inside the brains of our prospects. <laughs> All of that and more on this very special episode of the Loyalty Loop Makeover Edition from right here in my office in Boca Raton, Florida. In last week's episode of The Loyalty Loop, we condensed about three weeks of mystery shopping into just a few minutes, and I asked you one simple question. Where would you start with a marketing makeover for a Primo and Vidyard? Now, while you guys were working on answering that question, I hopped in a plane from Napa, California and went to LA to see a beautiful sunset. Then I hopped on a plane from LA and went to Dallas, Texas, where I spoke at a great event. Then I flew back from Dallas to Huntington Beach, California to speak at another event and go for an awesome bike ride on the beach. And the whole time I was doing all of that, I wanted to know what you thought. Where should we start our makeover experiences? And you guys had some great responses. Thank you so much for all the awesome ideas. Some of you suggested we fix that webinar follow-up experience, not a bad idea. Some of you suggested we change the registration process for both of these brands, great idea. Some of you suggested we start with that email follow-up sequence. All great suggestions and probably should be addressed, all of them. Here's what we decided to make over and how we got there. After a few weeks of interacting with both Vidyard and Aprimo, I decided to reach out to the reps that I was assigned and schedule a call with Courtney and Annette. Yes, that's right, I finally accepted their pleas for a phone call. And then, here's what happened. Hey, thanks so much for doing this. Um, I know it's like, I'm... Yep, I revealed to both of them that I had been mystery shopping them. And while Courtney seemed to be shocked and surprised, Annette, well... Yeah. I have a confession to make. I actually um doing some mystery shopping. I knew it. How'd you know? Oh, you weren't good at all. <laughs> okay, I guess I need to become a better mystery shopper. Noted. Thank you, Annette. Now, over the course of a 45-minute call with each of them, I honed in on just one thing that both of them said. They aren't here to sell me anything. Nope, their job is to guide me to the right product, even if that means it's not theirs. Now this sounds fantastic, and this is such an important point for every prospect to understand. You see, that's not the feeling I get given the interactions I had with either of these brands. Remember, an experience is just a series of encounters that leave an impression on someone. So let's quickly revisit my first interactions with Annette and Courtney. And let's slow it down a little. You see, Courtney sent me this email. It's a professional sounding email inviting me to do two things. One, watch a testimonial video from one of their clients. And two, set up a time for a call. So what's my impression? Meh. And Annette, Annette sent me this email. And in it, she also does two things. She also asked me to find a time on her calendar to chat, and she actually sends me to a video of her. Now, I'm going to play Annette's video before I tell you about the impression that I get. Hi, this is Annette from Aprimo. We all know that great content is essential for delivering exceptional customer experiences. But are you truly optimizing all your content during each stage of the life cycle? What's your impression? Mine? Not bad. Okay, maybe it's a little stiff, but here's the impression I got as a prospect. Meh. Here's the thing. Remember what both Courtney and Annette told me on their 45 minute calls? <laughs> they aren't here to sell me anything. Nope, their job is to guide me to the right product, even if that means it's not theirs. These emails don't give me that impression at all. In fact, they give me quite the opposite impression. 
Honestly, the impression I get from those emails is money! Money, 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 your money! So here's what we decided to work on. We decided to work on the first interaction after the moment of commitment. In a second, you're going to get to see Annette and Courtney's first attempts at making over their experience for the prospect right after the moment of commitment. But first, we need to pop inside your prospect's brain right at the moment of commitment. Welcome to your consumer's brain. <laughs> yep, it's pretty, it's pretty empty, empty in here. here. You see, anytime a consumer executes a moment of commitment, something wells up in the back of their brain. Yep, that thing welling up in the back of their mind is right here with the VHS tapes. Let's see if we can find it here. Oh, there's a VHS tape of Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Here's uh, Ryan's birthday. Here's uh, Anything Goes Friday Night. That's not it. <laughs> here it is. That's right, my friends, this is a stack of memories of other forms that people have filled out online and the experiences that happened right after them. You see, every time we've filled out one of those forms online, something wells up in the back of our minds called a crucial concern. A crucial concern is a critical matter of interest or worry attached to any moment of commitment. And the moment we fill out any of those forms on a Primo or Vidyard's websites, we have a crucial concern in the back of our minds. Our brain knows from experience that they are going to try and sell us something and they're going to use the data we provided to try and do it. Here's the thing, if Annette and Courtney are going to build a better experience for their prospects, they are going to need to address the crucial concern right away. Remember what Courtney and Annette said when we were chatting with them earlier? <laughs> They aren't here to sell me anything. Well, that, my friends, is not the impression that I get. All right, my friends, let's get out of the brain and let's do some marketing makeovers. Okay, so after our calls with Courtney and Annette, both of them decided to redo their introductory emails using a more personalized approach and a video using Vidyard's tools. Full disclosure, once again, I am a huge Vidyard fan, use it every single day, and they help make this video possible. So let's take a look at Courtney's very first video attempt. <laughs> Hey, Courtney here from Vidyard. Just wanted to say thank you so much for checking out our demo. I'd love to help you explore Vidyard a little bit more and answer any questions. And I give her a high five and big props for getting creative and thinking outside the box. She's really trying to make this feel like we're building a real relationship person to person. What do you think? Now, before I give you my thoughts, here's Annette's very first attempt at making over her introductory email. Hi, Andrew. This is Annette with the Primo. Thank you for reaching out to learn more about our exam capabilities. We work with many organizations in the retail space, helping them remove the friction, tension, and stress when it comes to optimizing brand performance and customer experience. I love that personalized thumbnail. I love that she's inviting me to answer a question. And I love that she's actually really trying to build a relationship with me. Here's what's missing from both of these first attempts. Neither one of them addressed my crucial concern. Look, you'll remember from part one that there are four big problems with every single one of these follow-up campaigns from almost every marketing brand in the world. And one of the biggest problems is that you're rushing the relationship. You're rushing the experience. Slow down, we're taking it too fast. We need to earn their trust. Here's the deal, over the next few days, Courtney and Annette both refined their videos over and over again, trying new things each and every time. And they got better and better and better. Next week, I'm gonna break down the exact changes they made. I'm gonna reveal the final video they decided to try with their customers, clients, and prospects. And I'm gonna wanna hear your feedback. What do you think? Did we make them better or are they worse? I'm telling you, you're not gonna wanna miss their amazing transformations. And at the end of all of this, I really want to know what you think. So subscribe to The Loyalty Loop right now so you don't miss those episodes and you get every single episode of The Loyalty Loop every week, one day before everybody else in the world with some extra insight and behind the scenes from me. So subscribe right now. In the meantime, go and read your team's follow-up email sequence. Are you addressing 
your prospect's crucial concern. Are you using reverse personalization or is it just all about you and getting on someone's calendar? Are you rushing the experience? Now, while you do that, I'm uh, heading back inside my brain. Oh, I know Elizabeth asked me to do something before she left this morning and she said it would be great if it was done before she got home but I cannot remember what it was. <laughs> I know it's probably stored in my brain somewhere, right behind those marketing tools. Maybe, maybe a new coat of paint. I wonder where I put my keys. Oh, look, a box of songs that I can never get out of my head. I like it like that. I like it like that. I like it like that. <laughs> 